pamoja hapa. Asante sana. Jambo. Jambo. Bwana asifiwe. Amina. On behalf of the General Conference, I'd like to send you the warmest greetings. Uh, kwa niaba ya General Conference, napenda kualetea salam za peke. Amen. Pastor Ted Wilson sends his special greetings to each one of you. Chungaji Ted Wilson ametuma salam kwa kila mmoja wenu. And Pastor and Mrs. Jerry Page also send their warmest greetings to you. Mchungaji na Mama Jerry Page na nao wametuma salamu za peke kwenu kila mmoja. And I'd like to thank you so much for your very warm welcome this morning. Na napenda niwashukuru wote kwa ukaribisho wa pekee kabisa mliotupatia. I'd like to thank the Pathfinders. Napenda niwashukuru watafuta njia. Asante sana. Thank you very much. And thank you. Na nashukuru kwa scarf. I'm one of you now. I am one of you. Ah mimi ni sehemu yenu, ni moja ya ya yenu tayari. Thank you. And to the church members. Na nashukuru pia kwa washiriki. God bless you. It's nice to see you. Mungu awabariki na nimefurahi kuona. And thank you for the choirs. Na nashukuru waimbaji. Your music is just beautiful. Ah nyimbo zenu ni nzuri sana. You sing like angels. Naimba kama malaika. Amen. Amina. And to the deacons and deaconesses. Na kwa mashemasi wa kiume na wa kike. Thank you. Asanteni. And God bless you. Na Mungu awabariki. And to the elders. Na kwa wazee wa kanisa. Good morning and God bless you. Habari za asubuhi na Mungu awabariki. And to our pastors. Na kwa wachungaji wetu. Thank you. Asanteni. And it's nice to greet you this morning. Na ni vizuri sana kusalimiana nanyi asubuhi ya leo. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Godwin for his warm welcome. Na napenda kumshukuru uh, Dr. Godwin kwa ukaribisho wake wa pekee asubuhi ya leo. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Musa Mitakaro na napenda pia kum, uh, kumshukuru Dr. Musa Mitakaro kwa mwaliko. I've, I've had been blessed to speak at many places. I have been blessed. Uh, Nimebarikiwa kuongea na, uh, se, na, na, na sehemu mbalimbali, but I don't remember a more beautiful setting than this. Lakini sijawahi kukumbuka uh, mazingira mazuri ambayo nimekwishawahi kukutana nayo kama haya. This is like the garden of Eden. Hii ni kama bustani ya Edeni. It's beautiful. Ni nzuri. And for all those that put the tents up. Na kwa wote ambao wameweka matenti and put all the decorations. Na kuyapamba kwa namna mbalimbali and made this such a beautiful place. Na kufanya eneo hili kuwa nzuri sana. Thank you for your hard work. Asante sana kwa kazi kwa juhudi yenu kubwa mliofanya. And there's something I want to point out as well. Ah uh, kuna kitu ambacho pia napenda nikitaje. These trees here. Um haya maemba hii miti hapa. These trees here have a special place in my heart. Because these are mango trees. And the mango fruit is delicious. But when I taste the mango, it doesn't just taste in my mouth. Uh, napokuwa ninaonja embe halisiloji hali, tu kwenye mdomo wangu tu. I taste it in my heart. Ninalionja hata moyoni mwangu. Because I grew up in a country far away from here. Ah uh, kwa sababu nilikulia katika nchi ambayo ni mbali sana kutoka hapa. I grew up in a small place in Australia. Nilikulia katika sehemu ndogo kule Australia. I grew up in a small house. Nilikulia katika nyumba ndogo 
but it had a big mango tree outside. Lakini ilikuwa na mti mkubwa wa maembe karibu na na nyumba hiyo. I grew up under a mango tree. Nimekulia chini ya mti wa muembe. And when I eat mangoes, na napokuwa nakula maembe, I remember home. Ninakumbuka nyumbani. When I see mangoes, napokuwa naona mti wa maembe, I remember home. Ninakumbuka nyumbani. Whoever put those mango trees here, yoyote yoyote aliyepanda miti hiyo ya maembe, thank you. Asante sana. You know, this is a wonderful church. Praise God for this church. Wherever you go in the world, you are home when you're in your church. You can go to more than 200 countries on this world. And you will find a home. Thank you that I can come here as a foreigner. And you welcome me. Like a son. Na mnanikaribisha kama mwana wenu like a brother kama ndugu um, yenu and thank you for that na, making me feel home na nashukuru kwa hilo kunifanya nijisikie nyumbani because this only happens through Jesus Christ kwa sababu hili linaweza tu kutokea kupitia Yesu Kristo amen amina amen amen I'd like to open God's word with you this morning. Ninapenda ni nifungue pamoja nanyi neno la Mungu asubuhi ya leo. And before we open God's word, na kabla hatujafungua neno la Mungu, I'd like to pray with you. Napenda tuombe pamoja. I'd like to pray that God speaks to each one of us. Napenda kuomba kwamba Mungu azungumze na kila mmoja wetu. That he speaks to our mind, kwamba aongee na akili zetu. That he speaks to our heart. Can we pray a simple prayer together? The simple prayer is this. Lord Jesus. Please speak to me. Can we pray that prayer together? Let's bow our heads. Ebu uh, tuina misha kuchabeti. Would you like to stay? Jam na pena kusimama. Let's stay. Tu tu simama. Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu. Please speak to me. Tafadali zungumza nami. Let's say these words together. Ebu tu sema maneno hayo pamoja. Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu. Please speak to me. Tafadhali zungumza nami. Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu. Please speak to me. Tafadhali zungumza nami. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Tafadhali kaen. I'd like to begin by asking you an important question. Have you ever come to a place in your life where you've been tempted to think do I matter to God? Does God care whether I exist? Does your life matter to God? This morning we're going to explore these questions. And let me tell you. God knows your name. Mungu analijua jina lako. 
God loves you. Mungu anakupenda. Whether you're a pastor, kwamba wewe ni mchungaji, whether you're an elder, kwamba wewe ni mzee wa kanisa, whether you're a deaconess or a deacon, kwamba ni mchemasi wa kiume au wa kike, whether you're singing in choirs, kwamba unaimba ndani ya nyimbo ya kwaya, whether you're a pathfinder, kwamba wewe ni mtafuta njia. Whatever you do in the church, chochote kile unachokifanya ndani ya kanisa, wherever you live, mahali popote unapoishi, God knows you. Mungu anakujua. God knows your name. Mungu anajua jina lako. God knows what you're going through. Mungu anajua kile unachokipitia. Even the secret things that we keep in our heart. Hata mambo ya siri tunayoyahifadhi mioyoni mwetu. God knows about those. Mungu anajua juu ya hayo. This morning I'd like you to open your Bibles with me. Asubuhi leo napenda tufungue Biblia pamoja to Luke chapter 1. Katika kitabu cha Luka sura ya kwanza. In Luke chapter 1 we're introduced right at the very beginning. Uh, uh, katika uh, Luka moja tunapewa utangulizi juu ya mambo ya muhimu. I'd like you to notice Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Nataka uangalie Luka moja mstari wa 5. Why don't you read that verse for us? Uh, nitasoma Zamani za Herode mfalme wa Uyahudi palikuwa na kuhani mmoja jina lake Zakaria wa zamu ya Abia na mkewe alikuwa mmoja wapo wa uzao wa Haruni jina lake Elizabeth This verse says a lot Uh, fungu hili linasema mambo mengi. It says a lot with what it does say. Inas, inasema mambo mengi kwa kile kinachosema and it says a lot with what it doesn't say. Na inasema mambo mengi kwa kile ambacho haikisemi. When you read in the original Greek language, unaposoma fungu hili katika lugha ya asili ya Kiyunani, it begins with the words in the days of Herod. Inaanza ka, na maneno katika siku za Herode. In the days of Herod. Katika siku za Herode. And Luke through the Holy Spirit is na, saying something really important. Na Luka kupitia Roho Mtakatifu anasema kitu ambacho ni cha muhimu sana. You see the Herod that Luke is writing about here is Herod the Great. Na huyu Herode ambaye Luka anaandika habari zake ni Herode mkuu, Herode mkuu. Luke doesn't give his full title here. Uh, 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 Luka hapa haelezei bayana cheo chake. His full title was King Herod the Great, the King of Judea. Uh, uh, nafasi ya au nafasi yake kim, kimsingi hapa inapaswa ajulikane kama Mfalme Herode mkuu. But it just gives an abbreviation of his full title. Lakini tu anatoa ufupisho wa 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 kile ambacho ni cheo chake. You see this king Herod the Great ruled Judea for 36 years. Huyu mfalme alitawala Uyahudi kwa miaka 36. And to rule this part of the world for 36 years was a long time. Na kuongoza katika eneo hili la ulimwengu kwa kipindi hicho kilikuwa ni kwa muda huo ni kipindi kirefu sana. But for God, lakini kwa Mungu 36 years, miaka 36 And so Luke begins with in the days. Na kwa na kwa hivyo Luka anaanza kwa kusema na katika siku za Herode because 36 years was just a few days kwa sababu miaka 36 ni miaka michache mbele za Mungu ni, ni siku chache mbele za Mungu who was this herod the so called great who who herod ni nani huyu aliyekuwa anaitwa mkuu this herod the so called great was born in 73 bc Uh, Herode huyu mkuu alizaliwa mwaka wa sabini na tatu kabla ya kuzaliwa, kuzaliwa kwa Kristo. When he was 25 years of age, he became governor of all of Galilee. Uh, alipo, alipo kuwa, 
alipokuwa um, na miaka ishirini na tano alikuwa ni diwani katika eneo la uh, Gali, Galilaya. Now Galilee wasn't some small district. Uh, Gal uko, uko Galilaya haikuwa tu ni wilaya ndogo. Galilee had a population of at least 2 million people as many as 5 million people. Um, wilaya hii ilikuwa na kati ya watu milioni mbili mpaka milioni tano. And here is a man at just 25 and he's the governor of this whole region. Na huyo hapa mtu mwenye miaka 25 na ndiye diwani katika eneo hili muhimu la Uyahudi. Now when he was 29, na alipofikisha umri wa miaka 28, as well as being governor of Galilee, he was made the governor of the whole country of Syria. Akiendelea kuwa diwani wa Galilaya, alifanywa pia kuwa diwani wa Syria. And when he was 32, na alipofikisha umri wa miaka 32, as well as governor of Galilee and Syria, akiwa bado ni diwani wa Galilaya na Syria, the Romans made him king of all of Judea. Uh, wa, 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 wa Rumi, wa